Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Good to have you back. Um, as promised, this is a video to run through the specs of the Transalp 650. Uh, Honda Transalp 650. This is 2003 that ran this model from 2001 up until 2005 without change. Um, and then after 2007, it turned into the Honda Transalp 700 where they just bought out the engine. But let's start off with the engine. So the engine is a 650cc V-twin. Um, bomb proof, absolutely bomb proof. Lovely, really, really nice engine. Um, and that makes 52 brake horsepower and 55 Newton meters of torque or 40 pounds of torque, depending on what you measure your torque in, whether it be um, Newton meters or pounds uh, so moving on to the front wheel we've got a 19 inch uh, sorry wrong we've got a 21 inch front wheel which takes a 1990 a 21 tire um, they're spoked so they are tubed they're not tubeless but you know they they're okay off-road suspension travel on the front is 280 millimeter and on the rear is 200 um, as we come in there, you can see we've got a monoshock there, standard monoshock. Um, you can adjust it, and but the front suspension is non-adjustable, so you can see the travel there. It's quite big, um, not too bad, but you know, not the best, but it's not too bad. So as we're moving around, as you can see in there, standard monoshock no problem so uh, you've got double discs on the front so let's go to the front of the bike you've got double brake discs there um, with twin pot Nissan calipers the brakes are good it was on the 600 where the brakes were really really poor and um, the brakes on here are very good I mean they're good for the amount of power that the bike's got they suit the bike really really well I've got absolutely no problem with the brakes at all and the rear brake is good as well as long as You've got good pads in there, so you can see I've got quite big beefy pads in there, but yeah, they're very good, very good, so uh, happy with that. You can see the rear, okay, so let's look at the rear tyre. I've got a 130 on here, and like I showed you guys before, you could probably fit a 140. Now, the recommendation is, as you can see there, is 130, 80, and it's a 17-inch R17, but the recommendation is a 120, 80, R17 and I could quite happily fit um, a 140 in there which I might do when I change these but they've been very good at handles well you can crank it right over with the bars you know it's no problem at all so I'll be happy to change those um, and try a, a 140 in there it's liquid cooled the engine um, it's got a five-speed gearbox okay so standard five-speed it's not six-speed just standard five-speed no problem at all it's all right a usual Honda gearbox they're not the best and they're not the worst it's not the strongest point of the bike at all though so I, I would say it's, it's yeah it's definitely not a strongest point of the bike at all and the gearbox might be close to the weakest point of the bike but the rest of it is bomb proof so it's really good um, the rear suspension adjustment screwdriver there you've got compression and you can send it softer, 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 softer or harder. So it's no problem there. The fuel tank is 19 litres. I'm trying to think what that would be in gallons for for the US. Was it 5.5 um, litres to the gallon? So what's that? That would be probably around about uh, one, two, about 3.8 gallons, I suppose. So yeah, but it's close to 20 litres, round up to 20 litres. Um, dry weight of the bike apparently is 199 kilos and it turns into wet weight with fuel is 219. So for 650 and um, for what, you know, your modern bikes are now, this is actually quite light. But the centre of the weight, there's a load of guys going by at the way on the tour, you can see there. Go by. Let's go 
good fun that looks really good fun um what was i saying yeah the the weight of the bike uh is quite high up right so this is the only negative well only that's one of the negatives is that the weight is quite high up on the bike it's not low down so it's quite top heavy so that does affect it off-road but more speed it's quite stable and the engine is, is just lovely um, really really good so top speed of this is 106 mile an hour what's that that's about 160 k's an hour okay so it, it tops out i'll just show you for kilometers about 160 and in miles an hour which isn't on there it will top out at about 100 and it goes over 100 mile an hour anyway um 106 is, is quoted at now not to 60 times not 60 miles an hour not to 100 k's not to 60 is 5.1 seconds and not to 100 k's is recorded at 5.5 so it's not a slouch, it's not a slow bike, and you can do a standing quarter mile you know, for you Yanks and, and Brits that, uh, in 13.7 seconds. So it's, it's not a slouch of a bike, actually. To, to be fair, by modern standards, it's still the same. This is not fuel injection, this is carburetor. So this is all carbs, no fuel injection, nothing like that at all. Old school carbs, really, really smooth, absolutely no problem. Come standard, with your um, back rack, which is like, you know, it's all metal, bomb proof, very good. So your top box will just go straight on, it's no problem. The space and storage under the seat, which I've shown you before, um, just generally a really, really good bike, you know. And the longer I've owned this bike, the more I like it. Uh, when I first got it, I was a bit like, mm, I don't really get what they're trying to do with this. And now I absolutely love it. I, I, I was a bit harsh on it. Um, very hard now to change this bike. I've got a few extras coming for this. Well, I'm going to change the handlebars because they're, they're they're dog shit, guys. The handlebars are fucking crap. They've got a nice rise on them. That's all I can say good about them. The they have weights not on the end, but actually inside the bar, and they're shit. Um, this suffers, which uh, uh, quite a few people have had. A few people said they haven't had um, from uneven tire wear for, and the bike itself i don't know why this is but it could be down to the spoked tires uh, sorry spoke wheels being not up kept in the models or as you go along or unbalanced so they're not balanced um these tires are a little bit old but they still got quite a lot of tread left on them you can see they're still good they've still got quite a lot of tread and I would say that, you know, it's, a, it's something that Honda never addressed. There is, a, there is a weave on this bike at speed, especially if you fit the top box, okay? And it's not, it's not going to shake you off, but I wouldn't take my, handle, my hands off the handlebars, both hands off the handlebars at speed on this at all, in case it turns into a shake. I'm going to try and eliminate this by trying to get, or by getting another set of bars, fit them lower lower bar so i can motocross bar go for, go on a more rigid bar and get bar end weights as well um and then put bar end weights on so i'm hoping that will sort that out i could retrue the front wheel but i don't need a new tire yet so i don't see the point and i want another set of handlebars anyway so i'm probably going to sacrifice a bit of comfort but i'm going to get a lower motocross bar um with as you can see here we're show my arm with another bar across which i can mount accessories on so double braced bar and see if that actually makes a difference because these even though they're steel and i love steel but they they seem really really soft um so they don't seem the best and also i'm going to change out the mirrors right so the mirrors give you good view behind you i think they give you good view but everyone else says they don't but i, I haven't got a problem with them but the reason i'm changing them is um that they're just not they, they look shit really to be honest they look completely shit so there's absolutely no point um carrying on with them i, I want to change them for someone else um they're plastic they do all right in a crash though but the original mirrors are quite robust um, and the whole bike is proper robust this plastic bash guard is brilliant it's absolutely brilliant it looks crap 
um, but it can take big hits, big, big hits. So um, looks are quite this even on it. So yeah, 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 great bike, absolutely great. Well, there's your specs. Um, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. I don't think I have. And um, it, what the, the question is, what would I change this for now? So I've got a full license. It does everything that it does well. It does it all well, everything well. Like I can do, I can tour on this, I can take it off road. I can take this gravel, I can take this adventure bike in. I can't trial ride it, wouldn't trial ride it, okay? It's just not designed for that. Um, I wouldn't feel confident because the weight's too high up. But gravel and soft dirt, definitely, definitely. Wouldn't trial ride it, wouldn't enduro ride it. It's just not that type of bike. People have done them. Um, people have world toured on these, you know, and, and they're a great bike. So what do I do to replace this bike? It's really hard. It owes me nothing. I, I bought it cash and it's been absolutely brilliant. So if you look at my choices that I would take now, because I'm more mechanically minded, I don't want rider aids. I'm not interested in rider aids at all. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even interested in ABS. It'd be nice to have it, but if they turn around, it, it would have to be, be able to switch off the ABS if I was taking it off-road. Um, the rest of the stuff, what do, what do I do? I can buy 500 Honda C, um, CLE, is it or CLX? No, CLX 500. That makes about, well, it makes less brake horsepower than this. I think it makes 45 brake. Um, physically smaller than this bike. Hasn't got the road presence. I don't think it looks as good. Um, I could go and buy a Benelli 502 parallel twin the engine sounds absolutely lovely but again you know less horsepower more weight the weight is really excessive on those Benelli's I think it's 230 kilos I mean I just you know the only other thing I could say that's attracting me at the moment is um, the Himalaya, uh, Himalayan Royal Enfield Himalayan but it's the lack of power it's 24 brake um, and I think it's, I think it's like 30 pounds of square torque, I think. Um, so it's quite a big lack of power, but it's going to be a little bit lighter. Wet, not much, only by a few kilos. Um, so it's going to be quite a lot slower. And it is physically smaller though. And I know the suspension will be better. And I think it's more robust to take bigger hits off road. I really do. I think that it is a better off-road bike than this is. Um, but this wasn't really designed as an off-road bike. This was designed, like you say, rally touring. It's a, it's a, it's a rally touring bike from all those years ago. Um, so, guys, uh, like, subscribe. Oh, yeah, another thing I want to talk about. I've, I've had a few videos on this, which have got, like, some over a 1,000 views each, but I've got 15 subscribers. So, um, you know, do the right thing. If motorcycling and you are a true old school motorcyclist, you'll believe in the community and helping out bikers. Don't just take the information and don't bother to subscribe and fuck me over. Um, you know, that's not why I'm here. I don't do that to people. So thank you to the people that are subscribed. But, you know, if you're not, basically, you know, fuck off. Because all it takes you is, a, is, a, is to push a button. And if you want like this motorcycle and like the content then you should subscribe instead of just taking the information and fucking off so you know balls in your court with that my rant's over but it's a bit of a piss take guys right so these guys are going anywhere they're going out in their quads so which looks pretty good and it? it looks good fun and they're going to be going up td um that is me guys so remember what i said about subscriptions it does help me out get in the comments section help each other out get vocal and uh, we'll take it from there guys right until the next one like subscribe and i will see you in the next one ciao for now